Now we would like to invite our respected professor and head, Department of Seed Science and Technology, Coimbatore, to welcome the gathering. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank our uh, most respected uh, and beloved uh, Vice Chancellor, Madam, and uh, Dean SPGS uh, for this uh, novel idea uh, by inviting our uh, external examiner for uh, delivering the guest lecture and all. Uh, so uh, with this uh, welcome address, uh, I give a brief about our uh, Dr. Sudipta Basu, Madam. Uh, Madam, uh, Dr. Sudipta Basu is a principal scientist uh, working at the Division of uh, Seed Science and Technology, ICR, IRI, New Delhi. Uh, she has completed her uh, undergraduate and postgraduate studies at Andhra Pradesh Agriculture University, the Hyderabad, Telangana, and uh, obtained a doctorate from uh, IRA New Delhi. Uh, she has been serving in the division of IRA for the past 24 years. She is fellow of uh, Indian Society of Seed Technology, New Delhi. And Dr. Bosso has an uh, expertise in hybrid seed production, quality enhancement, and evaluation. Uh, she has standardized uh, hybrid seed protection technology of maize, brinjal, bitter gourd, sponge gourd, and also cytoplasmic genetic male sterility based uh, cauliflower hybrids. hybrids. Also working on uh, biophysical and biochemical aspects of differential vigor, seed vigor, status in uh, compositional groups of uh, some uh, specialty maize. Dr. Basu also associated with the uh, all India Coordinator Research Project NSP Crops, so where she has validated a seed coating and priming technology for different crops, especially in maize and vegetable crops. And she is also having the five externally funded projects and other internal projects also. She published more than 40 research papers and 10 book chapters in her credit. At present, Madam is working on standardization of Hybrid seed production technology of uh, uh, gynecious uh, cucumber hybrids. So, with this brief introduction, I once again welcome you all for this uh, good deliberations, and we will have a good deliberations with uh, Dr. Sivita Basu. I once again welcome you, uh, welcome you all for this guest uh, Thank you for the thank you, Madam, for offering a welcome address. Uh, next, we would like to request our uh, most respected and beloved director. Seed Center, uh, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, Coimbatore, to deliver introductory address. Good morning, all of you. Uh, dear friend, uh, uh, Dr. N. Sandil, uh, Dean SPGS, uh, our professor and head, uh, Dr. V. Manon Mani, Dr. R. Jerlin, Professor, Seed Science and Technology, a former director, uh, Dr. Sundarai Swaran, uh, professors, and professors, associate professors, and my dear student friends, I'm happy to stand before you. Um, this eventful uh, month, I think uh, we have Professor and Head has organized uh, the third lecture in in the event of the Golden Jubilee of our uh, Department of Seed Science and Technology. So the first lecture was by uh, Dr. Stephen Groot from Wageningen University, in Netherlands. It was an online lecture, and the second was by Kent J. Bradford from University of California, uh, USA, and. Uh, um, I'm happy that uh, uh, Dr. Sudipta Basu is here uh, in, in um, I mean, uh, in person to deliver her uh, lecture on a very interesting topic that is uh, uh, the seed production in goats. Um, we, in short of time, due to the short uh, shortage of time, I'm just uh, leaving the dais for her. Uh, we are all very eagerly expecting uh, the lecture from you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, madam, for your uh, introductory address. Uh, next, we would like to invite our most respected, beloved Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, to deliver special address. Good morning to all. Uh, respected madam, Dr. Umarani, Director of Seed Center, uh, Dr. Manon Mani, Professor and Head, Department of Seed Science Technology, uh, Jerlin, Professor of Seed Science Technology, and Sundaresh Ran, former director and the staff members of the Seed Technology Department and Seed Center, and the students post masters and uh, doctoral students of Seed Technology, and also the uh, staffs uh, working in different disciplines, uh, attending online, and the students in different campuses, uh, those, being, those are all being connected by online uh, different campuses. I welcome you all for this uh, morning lecture. Uh, as the previous speakers told, uh, today our uh, chief guest, Sudipta Basu, Madam, is uh, came from IRI, 
So really, I am very happy, Madam, to invite you for this our Tamil Nadu Agriculture University organizing series of lectures, and we are happy that you are part of the uh, lecture series. And really, uh, your knowledge on the your rich experience on more than almost three decade experience on the seed, seed science and technology really help our students to learn things from you. Apart from that, uh, as Madam mentioned. Uh, there are a lot of students, TNA students now in IRI. They are competing in IRI and getting the admissions and doing in the Indian Premier Institute. So by seeing you, Madam, the more people will be motivated and maybe they will join in IRI. Uh, that also helps our students to go to the national institutes uh, and learn ad additional the newer, newer techniques and get their better placements. And also, I hear that Madam is working on a cucumber very uh, in the seed related issues. Uh, so it is one of the area which uh, I'm also want to learn from you, Madam, the, because uh, many of the vegetable crops uh, which were, which people are domesticating from wild to cultivated or the manipulating uh, different kind of hybrids. I uh, usually uh, when you change the habitat from wild to cultivated or some kind of changes happens. Uh, many people look on the quality traits, many of them look on the yield traits, but sometimes they missed what happened to the seed trait, like seed germination, seed dormancy, seed vigor. So many things which we lost during the process of domestication. So that is usually happens because some of the crops, uh, some of the species which definitely want to have some dormancy period. Uh, by process of evolution, we try to break the dormancy. We want to make them to germinate quickly. To in order to quicken the cycles uh, to fit in the different seasons. So we sometimes uh, knowingly, unknowingly, we break the dormancy. Sometimes uh, seed, in situ seed germination also, sometimes we, uh, we don't want the in situ seed germination. So sometimes we also manipulate again unknowingly or knowingly. So these are all the traits sometimes nowadays coming into picture because when you look into the deeper on the signs, on the how the seed is behaving on the uh, when you manipulate it a different way the seed also uh, we have to look on these key traits so i hope you are working on the cucumber which is again yeah uh, because you know the cucumber uh, the cucumis sativas cucumis mellow all very uh, very complex uh, species level uh, variation is there uh, but sometimes uh, people traditionally take cucumber sativa as a uh, vegetable, sometimes a uh, matured fruit, we sometimes take as a uh, fruit some part, and we cannot uh, exactly classify some of the traditional cucumber type as, as a vegetable type or fruit type. And also these these traits sometimes introgress into mellow, mellow type because mellow and sativa sometimes crossable, so they try to use it. So this kind of changes make more and more complex in the cucumis uh, complex. It's sometimes difficult to differentiate also mellow and sativa types. So this kind of complexity again made yeah, C technologies more complex uh, how work on the this kind of C traits. So this way uh, again when you work on the varietal side it is sometimes easy but sometimes when you use the uh, hybrids usually the hybrids the two parental lines are very uh, very diverse lines. So when you work on these kinds of cucumber hybrids again these complexities are there female and male different kind of mechanism is operating. So this also will make some more complex. So that that means more complex means more receptible issue, more more kind of um, challenges. So that may be a more kind of opportunity. So this way, C technologies nowadays uh, getting more and more uh, uh, issues are coming in the seed market. So your lecture definitely will address some of the key issues which uh, C technologies now facing. That not only the uh, public sector but also the private tech sector, seed industry every time they look for uh, some of the special issues to be addressed. So when, when uh, two weeks back, when the high wedge seeds uh, from Rasi uh, sister concerned, they are when visited, the MD is uh, telling that the many of the issues in the uh, seeds in the vegetable industry is little complex. So we need more and more people uh, to be needed to work on the certain areas. So the, we, these are the things which uh, uh, some of the issues maybe you can because you have long experience on the seed research and not only the vegetable side and also on the field crops. 
you worked on that so uh, definitely your lecture will definitely highlight the some of the important things and uh, i request the students so please uh, interact with the speaker because her rich knowledge only will be uh, you can able to understand only when you interact with her so uh, so she is a seasoned teacher so she never offend if you ask any questions madam will be so happy uh, if you ask more questions if you are not asking questions madam will not be happy all so uh, so i think uh, so if you make the madam happy by asking more questions at the end of the lectures so this will that that will help us to learn the uh, subject more deeper on that it is not uh, 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 it's not the things uh, just asking question because many of you are have in mind some questions definitely you can clarify when madam is here that is that is my humble request and also the online participants please try to put your questions in the chat box and if you want to please uh, ask the questions on online also it will definitely the session will be more interactive the session uh, more of dialogue one instead of monologue so every speaker like a dialogue than the monologue so uh, this will definitely will change the perception uh, i hope my students are good students madam they will definitely interact with you thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you for uh, seat center to arranging the lecture thank you madam thank you sir for your uh, detailed inspiring and motivating special address uh, guest lectures provide an important educational experience and can get to understand and perceive the insight and perspective of the guest lecturer's specific field with this we uh, would like to request our uh, respected guest speaker dr sudipta basu principal scientist division of seed science and technology icr iara new delhi to deliver guest lecture on seed production and quality enhancement in monaceous and gynaceous cucumber hybrids under protected conditions now the session is over to dr sudipta basu madam please first of all i would like to welcome uh, in uh, our uh, professor uh, science and technology will uh, dr uma rani director seed center former director dr sundeshwaran dr jarlin my uh, colleagues who are online from seed technology division and other divisions students of uh, undergraduate and post graduate and phd uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, deliver the guest lecture actually i was uh, thinking it will be a seminar kind of a thing uh, but i am highly uh, like impressed to see presence of so many people online and offline and uh, i don't know whether i'll be able to give uh, do justice uh, with what i have got and uh, since i was given one hour time i have tried to compile that in few slides uh, which are uh, mostly of uh, like uh, like pg students uh, like requirement to some extent it is outcome of our research work but uh, in future if i get an opportunity i would like to give more uh, detailed uh, output of our uh, deep uh, like deep seated research uh, outcomes but anyway thank you all and i would like to begin my presentation uh, i am working primarily on three aspects one is uh, seed production of vegetable crops seed production of maize these are two primary areas then seed quality enhancement and seed quality assessment and uh, in today's uh, presentation i will be giving my experience or sharing my experience on seed production uh, quality enhancement in monaceous and gynaceous cucumber hybrids why i have specified monaceous and gynaceous uh, because usually in cucurbits we have various kind of forms and cucumber is a crop in which all type of uh, forms are available cucumber is primarily a monaceous crop that means it has separately male and female flowers as you can see on left and right side of the first slide and male flowers occurs in clusters and female flowers are solitary and in this problem is that uh, cucumber uh, we have a lot of demand but because of low sex ratio uh, that means more number of male flowers to female flowers we do not get potential yield in all the crops we are having hybrids and why we go for hybrids because of high yield potential uniformity icd uh, so to ensure high genetic purity we should have variability in 
cucumbers, we have ample variability and we have good genetic system, varied sex forms, very low inbreeding depression because it is a cross pollinated crop, easy emasculation and pollination. We have genetic male sterility, we have genetic cytoplasmic male sterility, we have gynecious lines, we have parthenocarpic lines, and we can also use plant growth regulators to modify the sex form. And per pollination, we get more number of seeds. So in this, I would like to emphasize that on second and sixth monaceous, that means male and female flowers are born on the same plant. And this is the common, this is the common form. And next form is where only female uh, flowers are born on the plant. Why this form is more preferred? Because all the flowers in a vine will be female flowers. So any pollination is done, you will have only fruits. In others, maybe five to seven female flowers are there. And when you pollinate, only two to three flowers set fruit. So very limited uh, fruits per plant will be there. And uh, usually in cucumber, you have one female to 15 male flowers, and the range may go up to 30. But in staminate flowers, uh, it comes in phased manner. And sex expression in cucumber largely depends on environmental conditions, that is short days, lower temperature, high humidity, low nitrogen centric. Uh, status increases the female flowers, which is a desirable trait. And appearance of pistillate flowers on earlier node is desirable. And that's why we are going for pistillate forms. These forms are developed or uh, they are modified from our uh, by our uh, colleagues from vegetable science department. Some they are importing and then converting into the tropical background, which are tropical uh, cucumber background in uh, IRI and then once they stabilize the parental lines, we use them for our uh, hybrid seed product. So a tropical gynecious line, why the problem? Because temperate gynecious line, when we import from outside, they are uh, not giving only pistillate lines. Breakdown in the femaleness is there and there will be interspersed male flowers. So the purity of lines will be hampered. So we need to generate or ensure that there is stability in the line and the temperature does not affect the lines. So we have to convert or shift by back crossing to the stable tropical background. And these are stable uh, tropical lines. So these are all in the uh, like breeding program and few have been used to develop the hybrids. And we have the uh, uh, form where you can see the first, every node will have female flower. Whereas in Monesia, once in five to seven male flowers, one female flower will come. That's why pistillate lines is desirable. We have another uh, form, which is called parthenocarpic form. Why that is also important? Because in parthenocarpic, you do not require pollination to form fruits. They form on their own. For vegetable purpose, it is good. But when you have to induce male flowers, you spray some growth regulators, and that pollen is used to do pollination. and hybrid fruit is formed. Otherwise, just for fruiting, only uh, parthenocarpic lines may be used. But here we are using only pistillate lines. You can see down also, every node will have female flower and they will set the seed. If it is parthenocarpic, in one bunch, you may be having eight to nine fruits also. So that's why these traits are desirable for hybrid seed. Now, how do you maintain them? You have to spray silver nitrate, gibberellic acid, silver thiosulfate at different concentrations at two to three leaf stage so that there is induction of male flowers because otherwise they are only female flowers. So uh, if you do not do pollination, no seed set will be there. How do you develop hybrid seeds? So for induction of hybrid seed, you have to spray growth regulators. Otherwise, only uh, you will be getting the female flowers and then pollination will occur. <clears throat> Now for hybrid seed production, we have two principles in that. One is gynecious lines as female parent, because in female parent seed is formed. So more number of female flowers, the seed yield will be more in the vine. So usually we have four to five female flower in a vine. So if it is a gynecious line, you may have 17 to 18 female flowers. So that's why this system is preferred for seed parent. And monaceous will be the pollen parent. For pollination, you will use a male uh, monaceous, that means interspersed male and female. This is one system. Another system is gynecious into gynecious. 
but in this system problem is male parent the pollen parent is also gynecious so there also you have to spray growth regulator to induce male flower and which will be used for pollinating the gynecious flower so first system is more preferred in our hybrid which we have developed we are following gynecious into monoecious and they are very stable even at high temperature that means sterility breakdown is not there so uh, first part of the uh, lecture i will be dealing in uh, the standardization of hybrid seed production in utha cucumber gynecious hybrid 18 which is a gynecious based hybrid first in public sector developed by division of vegetable sciences and we have uh, been a collaborator in developing or standardizing the hybrid seed production technology this is the female parent which is a smaller in size and male parent is around uh, one feet in length and uh, this is the phenomena where each node will have two to three pistillate flowers so the first one is the monoecious line which is a male parent where inter first male and female flowers will be there which is a pollen parent or donor parent which will provide the pollen the next two photographs the tags you can see each node will have two to three late flowers so everywhere we are doing pollination the fruit is set the last photograph you can see this is the actual picture where the fruiting is very uh, like lot of fruits around 8 to 10 fruits per vine you can have and uh, this system have to be generated under protected cultivation because outside if you grow them without isolation there will be turning of uh, this gynecious to monoecious forms can uh, see uh, in this one form uh, is there where in gynecious lines when you spray growth regulators for induction of male flowers because female lines also you have to maintain hybrid seed production you will use the pollen parent from the monoecious lines but the female line also you have to maintain so for maintenance purpose you will spray around 8 to 10 plants in isolation the growth regulator so when the male flowers will be induced first bisexual flower will come hermaphrodite so there the fruits will be small sprout so which is clearly different from the this is hermaphrodite fruit which will develop on its own and this is the normal gynecious line fruit after pollination so easily you can by seeing the fruit shape you can identify so you have to pluck the flowers or pluck the fruit pinching of the fruit so that you maintain the pure line okay so this is the uh, gynecious line uh, fruit and this is the parthenocarpically or hermaphrodite fruits which is very different so it has to be pinched off to prevent contamination or uh, mixing with the gynecious line now this thing i would like to make little clear in monoecious lines we will have seven uh, state flowers and around 10 to 12 uh, male flowers and in female all the flowers will be only female no male flowers will be there and when you spray growth regulators there one is to one ratio if 10 female flowers are there 10 male flowers will come so this is the ratio and seasonal variation is also there uh, in uh, spring summer season you know have uh, better uh, ratio of male to female flowers but in kharif season there are more number of flowers so sex ratio is little now we have also studied the stand in standardization you need to also economize the number of male uh, male plants like if 100 uh, plants of uh, female parent is there you may need to have 10% or 20% of the uh, pollen parent so we try to see the pollen viability and stigma receptivity what we have found up to 10 am around 80% uh, around 98% pollen viability was there in the kharif season that is rainy season whereas in spring summer season uh, beyond that after 10 am the pollen viability has reduced because the temperature goes beyond 40 degrees so uh, that's why up to 10 am you have to complete the pollination flower opens by 6 to 7 am and pollen storage studies also we have done so up to 3 days pollen can be stored and very high pollen viability is there in stigma receptivity what we have found more than 95% stigma receptivity is there up to 10 am so uh, if you do pollination around 80 to 85% fruit setting is there. uh we have also studied with uh, uh, different staining method 
the pollen viability and stigma receptivity and uh, stigma receptivity what we have found that am and 10 am very good staining is there that means it is alcohol uh, dehydrogenase presence in the stigmatic surface just a staining method Daphne et al uh, method we have used and 12 noon 2 pm they totally become black and flattened like uh, they don't uh, the reaction is less and uh, the uh, uh, setting of the fruit is lower when we do pollination beyond 2 pm 4 pm and practically also if you see if you complete the pollination in the morning the labor costs are also economized and here uh, one day after anthesis if you do viability on the day of anthesis and one day after anthesis so the, after one day there is no stigma is not at all receptive so on the day of pollination in the morning hours by 10 a.m you have to finish the uh, pollination and uh, this is <clears throat> h2o2 uh, staining method whereby uh, number of bubbles you'll see more the number of bubbles uh, more the stigma is receptive so you have to sustain and lot of bubbles will be there as you see immediately when you open a cold drink bottle lot of bubbles you'll see so staining method is like that so in the morning uh, you'll see uh, up to 10 uh, minutes lot of bubbles will be there gradually the number of bubbles reduce as the duration of uh, flower opening is uh, increased then uh, in this uh, this is in pollination uh, to be done so these are the flowers you should take a male flower then you pollinate and then you put a tag and then you uh, find a and then around 35 to 40 days you have to harvest the fruit and the fruit turns brown now multiple pollination also we have tried we have found that uh, up to <coughs> once twice or thrice multiple pollination on the stakes same stigmatic surface multiple time we have done pollination but multiple pollination had no significant enhancement in the seed yield because labor has to do multiple times so you also have to take care of the cost of the labor additional labor so that much maybe five to seven percent or ten percent enhancement is there in the yield so that is not economically viable to do multiple pollination and sometimes the stigmatic surface is also damaged when you do multiple pollination so that is not a beneficial phenomena which can be undertaken in this then we also found or uh, tried to know that how much is the optimum fruit retention to be kept in a vine so we have done from one to five fruits up to six fruits per vine we can retain because once uh, you stop doing the pollination further uh, flowers will come but you will not have fruit set because the floor sink ratio is there so up to five to six fruits per vine is the bearing capacity what we have found that four fruits per vine is the optimum for hybrid seed we have director dr ak singh uh, uh, breeders then we have uh, dr bs somar who is head of the department of charge of uh, genetics division dr rajbir yadav all of them visited our plot and appreciated our efforts uh, on standardization of hybrid seed production. So this is the first part of the uh, like uh, standardization of hybrid seed production technology. The next part of the presentation in uh, <clears throat> cucumber, you have seed dormancy, uh, presence of seed dormancy. And the dormancy is because of hard seed coat and physiological seed dormancy, a combination of both that we have found and since we were working on hybrid seed production we should know what is the intensity or the duration of dormancy what we have found the male parent up to three months the dormancy is there but in uh, uh, gynecious and hybrid parents the dormancy is there up to four months beyond that the dormancy breaks and how we uh, saw that we uh, decorticated the seed tetrazoleum test we did we found that all the seeds are stained. That means they are viable. But because of hard seed coat, the dormancy is there. Now, uh, since we were working on dormancy study, we also took many type of dormancy. We found that monaceous lines, three, two to three months, four months, the dormancy is there. There is seasonal variation in the dormancy. Dormancy is less in spring summer seasons. The seed which is produced in summer season, the dormancy is less. <clears throat> but the dormancy is more when the seed is produced in rainy season and predominantly gynecious line also high dormancy is there gynecious line also dormancy is there parthenocarpic line dormancy is there certain 
<clears throat> exotic lines are there which are imported from outside they do not have dormancy so there is variation among dormancy and uh, we also wanted to study that when there is induction of dormancy at what time after how many days after poly we tried to harvest at 25 30 35 and 40 days usually after 35 days you can harvest the fruit it is mature but by that time the dormancy is already set in you can see here up to 20 days after pollination some germination is there at 25 days good germination is there but after that the seed coat matures seed coat becomes impervious and because of that the dormancy is set in and uh, if we decorticate the seeds then the uh, germination occurs but with seed coat the seeds are not germinated and uh, we have also tried to use different uh, growth regulators for breaking dormancy what we have found that dry heat treatment be effective in breaking dormancy Prilic acid and kno3 treatments are effective and uh, these treatments if the germination vigor index in the dormant seeds so if uh, you harvest the seed and immediately after harvest you have to take up sowing then what you have to do you have to give ga3 treatment or dry heat treatment dry heat treatment i would recommend because ga means it is a wet treatment again the storability will be a problem and ga3 is expensive dry heat in three uh, hot air oven 70 degree you keep the seed for three days there is crack in the seed coat we have done the scm analysis what we have found that after heat treatment there is crack development in the seed coat so because of that a scarification kind of effect is there because of which there is crack in the seed coat and the water goes inside so that's why the dormancy breaking is there here no phenolic compounds or any kind of uh, like toxic compounds are there in the seed so it is only because of seed coat and ga aba ratio now i am coming to that so, uh, one of my uh, student uh, uh, now he is uh, doing pdf which is so he has worked on uh, different dormancy treatment so he has taken ga and kno3 and then he has given the treatment and uh, was seen that what is the effect on uh, superoxide ions because or free radical activity so ga3 uh, treatment and kno3 treatment they have given higher activity of free radicals then higher activity of uh, respiratory enzyme sod peroxidase catalase and because of these higher presence of these enzymes after treatments <coughs> and here in uh, cucumber any seed the dormancy is because of uh, high when aba is high the dormancy is set in when ga3 is low dormancy is there when ga3 content increases the dormancy is so when we give ga3 treatment in the seed for dormancy breaking what happens uh, ga uh, content in the seed increases so because of that there is breakdown of an ABA content reduced. So there is uh, ABA GA ratio declines in GA treated help in release of dormancy. Now we also try to study the gene expression like uh, two uh, genes were there which has been reported by many uh, papers, other crops. So uh, GA3 oxidase one and two, these uh, activate the GA three oxidase enzyme and hyperactivity of these enzyme breaks the dormancy. So uh, increase in GA3 levels in on dormancy break have due to upregulation of GA3 oxidase gene. So that we have found that oxidase, uh, oxidase gene one is less effective as compared to oxidase two because hyperactive uh, uh, GA3 or overexpression is there of this in, uh, in this gene in GA3 treated seeds because of that dormancy break. Uh, so uh, in cucumber, the dormancy, if we see because of physical and physiological phenomena, physical means seed coat is impervious. So when we have stored after zero month, one month, two months, up to uh, five months, we have seen the EC is increasing in every month. And uh, because there is the seed coat becomes pervious. And because of uh, second, uh, because of storage of the seed, the ABA content reduces and GA content increases. That also we have done through 
एच पी एल सी आई एम नॉट टू हेयर होम्योस्टेटिस ऑफ आर ओ एस हेल्प इन मेंटेनिंग द लेवल्स ऑफ रिएक्टिव ऑक्सीजन स्पीशी एंड ए बी ए जी ए रेशो डिक्लाइन इन जी ए थ्री पीट एंड इट हेल्प इन रिलीज ऑफ डोमेंसी एंड जी ए थ्री लेवल्स इन ऑल डोमेंसी ब्रेकिंग ट्री मे बी ड्यू टू अप्रेगुलेशन ऑफ जी ए थ्री ऑक्सीलेस जीन विच मे बी अ फीडबैक इनहिबिट बाई एक्सोजिनस एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ now the third part of the cucumber uh, presentation and the last seed quality enhancement usually <coughs> in north india when you have to uh, the seed quality is always better in summer produced seed but uh, in january december the temperatures are very low up to february the temperatures are low so field emergence is very poor so we uh, try to Some uh, seed enhancement treatments for improving the field performance or emergence of the seedlings for seed production. So we have used different uh, priming treatments, and two varieties we have used: Usa Uday and uh, Super Green Hybrid. The so low low vigor, high vigor means uh, two type of seed we have used. One was of high vigor, one was low vigor. So in the low vigor seed, the treatments were more effective, which is a known phenomena, and we have. Uh, use the crop both in uh, under net house condition and outside but the performance of uh, these treatments were more effective in net house because in net house no virus effect was there all the pollinated fruits gave seeds so all the pollinated flowers set fruit but outside because of virus the few plants were damaged and growth was also restricted and uh, you can see uh, where control treatments are there gappy patches were there so uh, the outside we have seen low vigor medium lots and high vigor with growth regulators the field emergence was good but in low and high vigor uh, the performance were very clear cut different the performance of medium vigor lots was not much affected now field emergence speed of emergence germination this is initial germination in lab what we have found that uh, magnetic treatment uh, then solid matrix priming and uh, prime osmo priming by manitol <clears throat> they were very effective both low vigor and high seedling fresh weight and dry weight was also higher in these and vine length number of branches per node was also enhanced in solid matrix priming magneto priming and uh, osmo priming both the varieties and here you can see in Saudai and Pusa Green control KNO3 and Manitol. You can see as compared to then earliness of flowering. These treatments also speed the flowering because the plant vigor was more. The uh, quality of the fruit was better. More number of flowers came and the plants were vigorous and better uh, performance was. You can see control KNO3 and Manitol. The number of fruits were more. the uh, filling was more the fruit load was also better in this tree extraction just for the audience i have given uh or we have to scoop the we have to ferment it and by normal washing we have to extract the seed the seed filling is also better in the uh, primed not prime seeds uh, prime seeds when they are sown born on the rose plant now uh, since we were trying to the emergence under sub optimum conditions i have uh, given different treatments was done by another student msc student emergence uh, emergence seed weight fresh weight in treatment when we have seen uh, as compared to control as compared to control solid matrix priming was giving halo priming was giving but and we have tried to use a mathematical model parameter hill function test which takes care of uh, the time to 50% germination speed of germination total germination and the curve of the like spread of the germination based on all the solid matrix primed seeds were performing better among sub optimum Conditions and uh, solid matrix priming 
alleviate the detrimental effect of suboptimum these are the different curve at 20 25 degree you can see the curve is that means it will come faster and here also solid matrix priming as compared to control higher the curve means time to 50% germination time taken to germination total germination all these were better in prime seed that is solid matrix prime seeds and this we have proved with four phf factor uh, this is a mathematical model which in nbpgr also you are doing and like dr bradford you had lecture so people are going for mathematical model uh, models for quantifying the speed of germination or quantifying the germination process so prime seeds were better performing and uh, with this uh, i would like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to present a brief uh, like research outcome of our research in four to five years uh, which includes research undertaken by me the seed production one the dormancy one and a few part of seed enhancement is partly taken by the msc and phd student of under my guidance and i am also working on onion uh, seed storability production and uh, the physiological and biochemical uh, variations in differentially stored onion genotypes and cucumber genotypes so in today's presentation since uh, limitation was there of the time i have tried to brief on few aspects of uh, seed production aspects priming aspects of uh, cucumber and uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and i don't know how far i have been able to give my view or my research work uh, make you understand what we have done but i will be very happy if you are able to understand and if you have any queries i would request you to but otherwise uh, madam now you can take thank you ma'am thank you madam for your elaborated informative lecture and also for sharing the information and the experience in hybrid seed production seed dormancy aspects and seed quality enhancement with us uh, really it is highly helpful for enlightening the scientists and the students now the session is open for discussion participants are requested to interact with our guest speaker good morning but in the case of uh, dry heat treatment for breaking the dormancy you were recommending 70 degrees celsius for about yes. three days so uh, at the time of maintaining that 70 degrees celsius what may be the temperature on the inner side of the seeds this may be outside the seeds you will have that 70 so what may be the seed temperature of uh, we have not taken but uh, what we have found that it is not damaging the seed because after that the germination has improved the dormancy has been broken so if it is damaging the seed then uh, we should take care of what is the seed temperature and what is the uh, like peripheral temperature and, and outside the same, temperature. Yes. Because uh, people have worked up to nine uh, days also. There is uh, one person in IAHR. So that sir has done in some wild species up to uh, nine days. So there also the break, breakage in dormancy is there. But as such, no damage is there because it is developed. The seed coat is tough. So because of dry heat, there is cracking in the seed coat. Uh, so because of that, the dormancy is breaking. So as such, uh, the heat is not damaging the uh, cotyledon of the seed. So when we can expect that the cracking will occur on the seeds, ma'am? Because we are exposing for three days. Yes. So uh, when we can expect that kind of cracks, expected level of cracks on the seed coat? Uh, sir, actually we have not done uh, hourly photography. So uh, we may try later, but... Uh, uh, we have done one day, two day, three day, four day like that. Up to 10 days, we have given dry heat. So what we have found three up beyond three days to nine days, the um, seed is improving. The germination is same. Further improvement does not occur. So since nine days doing the treatment becomes little difficult, like lot of energy, electricity is wasted. Same result we are getting by three days. Within three days, the cracking occurs. So that's why we have optimized for three days because some people told us that be up to nine days if you do, you may damage because 70 degrees is very high. Yes. But actually it is hard seed coat. So this dry heat is actually cracking the seed. Yes, ma'am. Once that crack will occur, there is a chance for increasing yes. the uh, inner foot temperature. 
seen any deterioration in seed germination. Beyond that, it may occur, but in our case, in this cucumber varieties, there was no damage up to nine days. Thank but uh, we have seized up to three days because uh, by working on the economics, same results, three day, five day, six day, seven day, up to nine days. So why to keep till that time? Yeah, your result is specific to that particular variety or hybrid or that is applicable yeah. for all? Parthenocarpi, gynecious, all type of varieties which are there. So in all we have got similar up to three days, it is optimum. Thank you. Just to add to the question of uh, Dr. Mupira, at 70 degrees centigrade for nine days, yes. uh, the seed coat, even though it is not cracking, even though it is a hard seed, will not the heat be transported to the embryo? That's what I'm telling, madam. Actually, uh, we have taken uh, sampling at uh, every 24 hours interval, but we have not seen any significant decline in seed germination. Like three days, uh, we have got up above 90 degrees germination, which in control was 0%. So no damage is there because maybe the pores are very uh, fine and it is not damaging. But we recommend three days, sir. And maybe the seed coat is not conducting the heat to the embryo. Maybe, maybe, madam. That we have to further study because uh, last year only we started uh, this dormancy studies okay. because we found this for everywhere they are writing three to four months. But we saw variability. We thought that ABA, GA, uh, equilibrium and other things we will start. For last one year we are doing. So maybe in a one or two years we may also think of what you are telling that maybe Mechanical we can do the mechanics. We have genomics facility. So there, I think this is a good idea. We can uh, try, we can uh, take the photographs at every two hours interval and we may see like how the cracks are increasing and what is the effect on uh, yeah. embryo inside, embryo and cotton. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, you are offering that 70 degree Celsius for the seeds. So at the time of that offering that heat treatment, the seeds are under movement. It's a mixing condition. We are keeping in uh, glass petri plates. If it is on glass petri plates, that one side of that seed alone get exposed to that 70, that other seeds may not get exposed. So that is uneven heating. Try so that may, uh, yes. particular things, that we can expect some carbonization kind of Maybe, things. maybe we may think about it. We have actually not. Because not, you are offering dry yes, heat. Yes, I do understand. You are, what you are telling is correct. We'll try to uh, do this time when we do, we will try to do it. Or we can put in some. Uh, yeah, but sure are, that should be in oscillations. Yeah. That uh, yes. incubators are there. Uh, Take us with the incubators. Yes. So where we do pathological studies, we can do in that also 70 degree easily. We can induce there. So maybe three, four days we can keep in that dry shaking. Yes. Madam, uh, finally, uh, we are having uh, two questions in chat box, madam. Yes. So one is, uh, what is the usual oval to seed conversion ratio? That is one question. Oval to seed conversion. And another one is, uh, there is, uh, there is any uh, relationship between this bitterness and the quality of the seeds or why yes. they are asking. Madam, uh, <clears throat> in this uh, gynecious lines, since we are doing producing this, doing the seed production under protected cultivation, the bitter principle does not occur because we are using a monoecious line and we are doing manual pollination. Yes. Usually when you leave it, but the same thing when you do in open condition, there the bitter principle may come. Because uh, when we are using uh, monoecious lines uh, of a known progeny, usually uh, like uh, temperate types or tropical types like Pusa or that, you have more uh, bitter principle, which are the desi types, uh, which are uh, like rainy season cucumbers. There you have this bitter principle. But the monoecious line, which we have used as a parental line, it does not have the bitter principle. So when same pollen we are using, where it does not have the bitter principle. So the fruits does not have the bitter principle. And a second question, what it was? Is oval to seed conversion ratio, ma'am? Uh, madam, it is up to uh, 60 to 70 percent. Okay. Because we are doing pollination inside the net house. So there is no waste. Like all the fruits set seed and uh, all the fruits turn to maturity. Okay, madam. Uh, thank you for your nice explanation. Uh, hope this uh, these questions are posted by Dr. Sangren, sir. Hope uh, he is in online. Hope uh, he is uh, satisfied with your answer, madam. Thank you, madam, for your uh, nice explanation. And um, uh, after this interaction, uh, shall we wind up the in uh, this uh, guest uh, lecture and we will proceed to the final Y by Y examination, madam. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam. We thank all the participants and guest speaker for their effective interaction.
uh, unless you would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jerlin, Madam Professor, Department of Seed Science and Technology, to offer vote of thanks. Respected Dean, School Postgraduate Studies, Respected Director, Seed Center, Respected Professor and Head, Department of Seed Science and Technology, and Respected Former Director, Seed Center, and uh, Respected Former Director of Research. And uh, today's guest speaker, Dr. Sujitha Basu from IRA New Delhi, other colleagues, students, good afternoon. So it is my proud privilege to stand before you to propose the formal word of thanks. So first of all, I would like to thank wholeheartedly our Honorable Vice Chancellor for providing the opportunity to hear this useful lecture series during the conduct of viva oc so thank you madam so it's our bounden duty to thank our dean school postgraduate studies who is very keen on arranging this kind of lecture series during the viva oc examination so our heartfelt gratitude to our director seat center who always encourages and guides us in all our efforts and it's our due, thanks are due to the professor and head who is arranging all these promotional educational activities and uh, for the benefit of students and scientists. So we would also like to thank our former director, Seed Center, who is part of arranging this important and useful session. Our special and wholehearted thanks are due to our Great guest speaker, Dr. Sudipta Basu, principal scientist from IRA New Delhi, who is always energetic, enthusiastic, <laughs> because uh, I know her, and uh, who has enlightened all of us with uh, the complete knowledge of hybrid seed production of cucumber. Madam, really, we were all very much delighted to hear your uh, very enthusiastic and uh, useful, knowledgeable a lecture on this uh, seed production and uh, pollination behavior, seed dormancy, storage, and seed quality enhancement techniques of this uh, cucumber hybrid seed production, which really gave us an insight, complete insight about the cucumber seed production. Thank you so much, madam. So our thanks are due to all the st scientists, students, and other staff members who are uh, participated both online and offline. We also thank once again our Dean SPGS for providing this uh, public defense hall for conduct of this program and also Professor Physical Science for uh, providing us the technical support. And uh, again, we also thank our uh, former Director of Research and uh, the member Dr. Mari Muthu and uh, Proctor Dr. Jnana Chitra for, uh, to be here for the conduct of this uh, Viva OC examination. Thank you once again.